Hey, this is David, and I got William here, and uh, went to do a project from upcoming book, the food preservation book. I went and bought some dry ice so I could show how to uh, seal up food and dry ice using the carbon dioxide to evacuate out the air. But they only let you get it in 10 pounds. You only need about two ounces per barrel. So I've got a lot left. And so I've got this pellet dry ice, and there's all sorts of neat stuff you can do with it. But when you buy it, if you get it in a paper bag versus the plastic bag, it'll frost up and that'll keep it uh, keep the moisture out which is always a good thing because otherwise you get uh, more water than you get dry ice so this is just a warm bucket come here William I want to show you this you we're just gonna play around with some things you can do watch look at the bucket look at the bucket ready Woo! we make in fog Wow. Water, water. That's awesome. Oh, yay. Yeah. Oh, what's it doing, Wee Wee? Oh, no. It's bubbling out. No. That really has no use in anything. Really? It's just playing. But you can use it to force carbonized drinks. If you don't want to use the natural carbonization where you use a little bit of yeast and a little bit of sugar in your root beer or your, you know, fruit punch or whatever you're doing because you don't, maybe your religion doesn't let you have any alcohol and the 0.2% whatever that you get from a natural carbonization is, is something that you can't tolerate. You can always dump some in here in your uh, drink, some dry ice in your drink and uh, it'll carbonize it up. Hi. You want to touch it? <laughs> Oh. Do you feel the air? Do you feel the air? Let the air come out. The camera. You like play with you would you rather play with the camera? Oh. Uh-uh. Alright, something else we can do with dry ice is we can make a poor man's liquid nitrogen. Now, real liquid nitrogen is like 300 degrees below zero, like 373. This, using dry ice, only gets to about 110 degrees below zero, right? And let me give you a safety precaution here. Regular liquid nitrogen, because of the vapor pressure, because of the density, basically when you stick your hand in it, the liquid nitrogen will boil before it actually touches your skin. So just cold nitrogen touches your skin. So you could actually probably stick your hand in a bucket of, of liquid nitrogen and it would be fine. If you stick your hand in this poor man's liquid nitrogen, in this uh, super cooled alcohol that we're going to make, it will stick to you like napalm and give you severe frostbite. Okay, so you have to use precautions, use gloves, use a pair of pliers. Don't get your hand in here. If it touches it, you will have a bad day. So it really doesn't matter. You can use a bowl, but you really want a chamber to hold your dry ice, and you want a chamber to hold the, the liquid that you're going to use. And what we're going to use today is some 91% isopropyl alcohol. You could use pure grain alcohol, ethyl alcohol, if you can get it pure enough. Hey William, if you use like regular like vodka or something, because of the water content, it will actually gel up, right? And that, that won't work for what we're doing. First thing you need to do is take your inner cup. Hey cameraman. First thing you need to do is take your inner cup and you need to poke some holes in it. You making sure all the adjustments are right, William William? It's a knife and a cup. Okay. All right, just a bunch of holes. Just poked a bunch of holes in there. Then I'm just going to take some some uh, dry ice pellets, and I'm going to dump in the bottom. Put the cup in there, and sort of pack it around the edge. Uh, hold your hand. No nice. No nice for William. Not yet. You gotta be at least four, your mama says. Now that everything's poured in there all nice and good, we're just gonna take the alcohol. Mm. 
Woo! That even fogged up more than the water did, didn't it? Here it comes and we'll in. just let this get cool off. The part, see how it's floppy? And then where it touched it, it's it frozen solid. See that? It's all cracking, cracking off. Pretty cool. And once that uh, dry ice evaporates out, it'll go back to room temperature and, and do all of this carbon dioxide and the alcohol. So I could actually pour that back. See how it's frosting up? So I could actually pour this back in the, uh, the container. Now because I've dumped stuff in it like thistles, I mean I wouldn't use this for medical purpose, but you know, maybe paint thinner or something. Another good thing you can do is uh, if you have an ice chest, you can put a layer of dry ice at the bottom of the ice chest and then put like a piece of plastic sheet or something over it. Not to make it airtight, just sort of have a little bit of separation between your regular ice. Fill it up with, with uh, regular ice, just regular water, frozen water. Put your drinks in it and the dry ice will keep the regular ice frozen and you get much, much longer storage time you know if you were out camping or something so I don't know how often preppers are going to have dry ice but you can do lots of neat stuff with it so till next time you catch some on www.teangun.com